Welcome to Cheryl Weston, Conversations with Cheryl Weston. And we're really pleased to have today our guest as Preston Love Jr., um, the man of all. So we're going to bring Preston in. Um, as I said, he is kind of like the, uh, I think we're going to bring Preston in. <laughs> He's asleep. He's sleeping. <laughs> hey, there he is. I know. Um, as I said, today our special guest is Preston Love Jr. And uh, he is the executive director of forurban.org. However, as we all know, Preston's a man of many. Um, so one of the things that uh, we wanted to talk about today, which I think is um, very important and uh, anything that we can do here on conversations with Cheryl Weston, we want to do to get the information out because I think it's important. And um, as this election is coming up and what we I hope that we have learned here in Omaha, um, the Lincoln mayoral race show what can be done when we work. And I'm not going to say I'm working like as a Democrat or Republican. I'm just want to work to get people out to vote. And that's what I think is the most important thing is to educate people, get them registered, get them out to vote. And so that we can make change because what we're not getting. And I think uh, my personal thought is we're not educating people to be informed voters and to say, you know, why is it important to get out and vote? And I think that's what something um, I attended Preston Summit uh, several months ago. And that was one of the things I came away that people really charged up. And I think one of the points that Preston made is trying to get educated, get people educated, get them informed, register, and then get them to the polls to vote. And so I, with that said, um, I want to, like I said, bring in Preston, who, who's been asleep, but um, he's awake now. <laughs> and... Um, Preston, you had sent out some in, um, information about the summit as a follow-up and what you're doing. So I want to turn that over to you. If you could go in um, and let us know what is happening, where you're at. Um, I know there's several classes that are coming up um, that you're going to be uh, hosting for training. And if you could explain what that means to be um, a deputy train um so if you, I'm going to kind of like give you the open mic to let oh, it go. Oh, you should know better than that. <laughs> well, I do have the control to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your leadership. You and I uh, have interacted for years and we uh, are working together on a number of things, mm -hmm. uh, not because we just looking for something to do, <laughs> but not hardly <laughs> so much to do that, uh, uh, quite frankly, uh, not everybody is doing a lot of people observing a lot of mm -hmm. people are talking, but, uh, uh, there are things to do talking sometime, as you mentioned, is part of it because talking can be education. But mm -hmm. so I, I, I consider it an honor to be <laughs> on your show. And uh, uh, I won't hold you responsible for, first of all, <laughs> calling me an old old folks uh, reminder. reminder. Well, that's what you <laughs> left on your message. So I said, okay, I'll play this back for him. <laughs> old folk reminder. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it's good. You know, we need not to go too fast without saying thank you, Lord, because uh, uh, the, uh, the whole idea that we are doing what we're doing and, Mm -hmm. and able to laugh and, and amidst all of this turmoil uh everywhere it, you, internationally in the world in the country in the state right. in the city uh we just as they thank you but directly to your question uh to just give it uh the background it deserves is uh our community north omaha uh mm -hmm. which is uh, in, in back in the day was pretty much uh, summarized by saying the African Americans. We no longer mm -hmm. uh, in our community are African Americans only. We are that's correct. Uh, uh, Sudanese, South Sudanese. We are African Americans. We're Caucasians. We're Latinx. We're Asian. 
all of that. And all of those factors are either working for or against uh, mm -hmm. our communities voting. Uh, quite frankly, if you add all those up, none of them are contributing to good voting. So we've got a mm -hmm. challenge in North Omaha. I've been watching it and studying it and documenting it and writing on it for years. Uh, but uh, it, it occurred to me here recently uh, after the uh, 2022 election that, mm -hmm. oh my goodness gracious, enough is enough. We are really just dropping the ball election after election. I'll be very specific. Uh, but, uh, and that uh, we needed to uh, mm -hmm. just stop put st the stake in the sand and try to get us all focused on what's at stake. And so that was the idea of the Black Political Summit. We call it the Black Political Summit because my emphasis is always my part of the North Omaha community, which is mm -hmm. the African Americans Black. But we surely invited the whole North Omaha community, Black, White, Yellow, Brown, uh, mm -hmm. We are calling it the Black Political Summit to make a point, quite frankly, uh, but it surely, in reality, is an effort that we all going to have to join together. When you look at our precinct and registered voters, we no longer can look at any precinct that is totally or predominantly uh, African American. So no. we know we don't don't need to uh, fool ourselves if even in the way we look at what has to be done. It has to be done with all the factors. Uh, and so the idea of the Black Political Summit that you referenced that we had on February the 4th was right. to, uh, well, the vision was to bring the community together and do exactly what you said, uh, Ms. Weston, which is to educate, to let them know uh, what the problems are with us not voting, be mm -hmm. very specific, and to hopefully uh, get them engaged and get them to understand that we need to work together. It's no big vision of mine or yours or someone. Right. Somebody has to, there's mm -hmm. a leadership part, but it's a it's a collective effort. You can lead all you want if nobody's following. <laughs> no, the leadership award <laughs> so, that's for sure <laughs> and we know that a lot of stuff yeah. we're working on together but the other way uh so it was not automatic the fact that we called a black political summit that anybody would come <laughs> and so all of the Thank you. You had a great and, turnout. Uh, great. <laughs> we did have, and you, you, you yeah. stole my thunder, but we had a great <laughs> turnout. But yeah. what what does that mean? It really means that deep down, I think uh, people know that we're not handling our business. And so they came, and you were there, Cheryl. There was a mm -hmm. there was an atmosphere, uh, a uh, uh, excitement. That this was being done yeah and, I, and I, i'm uh i think it should be given credit to you and i don't remember the other the young lady that was helping you her name but crystal you could Fox. feel it crystal it was you could feel it in the air that people wanted to and i yes, think yes. now yes. is the point is is that don't sit back and do nothing you've got interest let's yeah, keep it yeah. moving yeah, and I yeah. think one of the things, and I feel very strong, is we're just not, and as I said, when I mean we, I mean this community, we're not understanding how important it is as to who we elect. And that, I think, has been part of North Omaha's problem in not being able to get, we have not really taken the importance of saying, who do we think is going to be doing the best for us? Um, people say that, you know, I don't, well, what I need to vote for, you need to vote because these people are making things happen in your everyday life. Yeah, absolutely. And both, uh, we should be both proactive and reactive, but your point's well taken. It, it's not, and, and let me go ahead and say this clearly. Uh, many may know, but 
for years, I have been very active in the Democratic Party. I mm -hmm. actually was uh, a uh, the vice chair of the mm -hmm. Nebraska Democratic Party. I was a candidate for the United States Senate, uh, endorsed by the Democratic Party. But let me quickly say, uh, after saying that, that I'm not uh, interested in electing a Democrat no matter what. I'm elected, just like you said, we, mm -hmm. uh, the, it turns out that it, it almost redefines itself, but I would elect a Democrat or, in, I mean, a Republican or independent if I thought mm -hmm. they were better for the community. I mean, I, I say that with all my, quote, Democratic credential, uh, but uh, our community uh, quite uh, uh is predominantly Democrat, but we need to educate our community uh, right. about voting in our own self-interest. And if that's Democrat, great. If it's not, it's got to be great too. Uh, but you also mentioned the fact that we've had candidates that I think that would have done pretty good for our community, better than uh, the incumbents. We, mm -hmm. By the way, we could take the rest of the time <laughs> office by office and, and call a roll on that. And yeah. you know, quite frankly, some of them are, uh, uh, are most of them are Democrat, but uh, it's pri primarily that is issue based, not party based. And then some some of them are not black and mm -hmm. to grow up in 2023, uh, voting in a black does not guarantee you a thing. Amen to that. Second that because, and that's yeah. what I say. And people like kind of look at me. I'm like, you know, just because a person looks like me, they may not be and have my that's philosophy that's or principle. And I, I strongly believe, and I will. One of the few times that I'm going to absolutely agree with you in public, Preston, is to say, <laughs> <laughs> um, that we need to be looking at the individual, and that's oh, always yeah. been my premise: is yeah. to be informed because. I, I strongly and uh, and I'm actually working on an article that I want to uh, write is that North Omaha has not had the qualified um, individuals. When I say qualified, they have not really had the community's best interest. You know, they've had their interests, but not the community's interest. And oh. I agree with you. I don't care whether you're purple, green, white, blue, whatever. I want to know what are you going to do, um, you know, especially I kind of go back to uh, Janet Jackson's song. What have you done for me lately? Yeah, well, we we have the inclination to vote for an African-American, and I'm surely for that. My mm -hmm. inclination is the same, but my intellect and my experience has told me uh, that should I vote? Should I be for Clarence mm -hmm. Thomas? Should I <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to, you know, really try yeah. to make a graphic is we can't go by whether or not you're African-American or not. Correct. We should start with the assumption that we're going to try to find someone from our own community, our own culture, mm -hmm. our own history, our own heritage, because the, the assumption embedded in that is they would be better for our community. So that's what we start with. But you, you can't finish it that way unless Correct. you do thinking process, and we quite frankly, part of the educational process is we need to have our, our community grow up politically. And uh, that's nonsense that uh, uh, we just knee-jerk do Republican, I mean, do Democrat and knee-jerk do Black these days. And so, but with all that said, uh, and all of that, I want to just cite a couple things. It won't take a long time with this, okay. but we, we are telling your viewers that we don't vote, but I don't know that they realize how bad it is. I want to go very quickly through a few numbers. I did this okay. summit, but in 2004, <clears throat> uh, which is uh, which was a presidential year, mm -hmm. uh, we voted as a community. Uh, turnout, by the way, is a term we use. Turnout is the number of people who vote as a percentage of the number of people who are registered. So if you say half of the people vote, that's turnout is 50%. So in 2004, uh, we voted at 44%. Our turnout was 44%. We, 
we, meaning North Omaha. But guess what? The, rec- the rest of Douglas County voted at 65%. Correct. Only a, what is that? 19% difference? Mm-hmm. That's a gap. And I could go year and year after year after. Uh, and it's all, it's been uh, a gap of anywhere from 10 to 20% every year. But let me point out one big year. 2008. 2008 was Eight. the year that we had Barack Obama running. And if any year we should have been voting like crazy, we should have let uh, in this area, we should have led the rest of the county from North Omaha and out voting turnout wise, anybody. But guess what? We, we were, uh, we had a gap of 10% in 2008. All of that, uh, the record shows we have done, have not done our job even when we really probably should have been focused. With all that said, I want, so we 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 went, we educate we have to educate our people on on that and let them know how bad that is and what does it really mean? It means that if we do have uh, someone that the community thinks is uh, can uh, really help our community more than their opponent, then we need to get out and vote for them. Otherwise. We're wasting our time, and we've done that year after year. Uh, I, I I use this example, but I don't want to over over use it. But in 2022, we mm-hmm. had Tony Vargas uh, who ran, and uh, without trying to evaluate him in in a, uh, a structured research way, uh, many of us felt that he would be a better representative than uh, the incumbent, Don Bacon. And so, okay, if we felt that way, forget about whether you agree, but if we felt that way, and we we <laughs> did, because we voted for him predominantly in our community, but guess what? We didn't vote enough. Had we voted on par with the rest of Douglas County, he would be elected. <laughs> yes, so, I agree. Shows you what the power that we have. That's the real issue: is we're dissipating the, our power. And the second part of the problem is uh, we're dissipating our leverage. Leverage is mm-hmm. different than power, or they converge. And that is that if we're not able to say and tell the rest of the world that we have the power uh, to uh, elect what we think are the good guys and uh, mm-hmm. and not vote for what we think are the bad guys, we don't, we've lost our leverage. And by the way, leverage goes beyond the election. If we have issues that we feel strongly about or Correct. against, and we go, need to go and uh, talk to or whatever we need to do uh, to the elected officials, and we say, we should be able to say, if you don't do what we're going right. to, you know, we're going to gather together and vote you out of there. And we can say that, but we're going to get laughed at because they're going to say, you all don't vote. So go on, get, get out of my face. We lost our leverage. You know, I want to just interrupt you real quickly there, Preston. And that is where, um, I, how do you get that changed? in people's mind, because you have to change it in the thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that a lot of people have gotten to this, well, it doesn't make any difference. How do we educate people from the community to understand you have so much power Yeah. if you would vote, but you're not voting. And I think I have to go back again to what I think is we're not getting to people to understand when you don't vote, you have no say. When you don't vote, you can't, as you just said, you can't go to someone and say, hey, if you don't do this, we're not going to, we're going to vote you out. And, you know, yeah. there's yeah. others. If you go to certain areas, um, they'll tell them, they know that elected official knows what that community, yeah. what power that community has. Yeah. And that's what um, 
I came away with hoping that you would be able to, not you alone, you're not working, you can't do it all, but that the summit would continue to get people to understand. And it's not sufficient to say anymore, well, look at people, they died for you to get this vote. They look at the, I think we have to get it to people to understand what it means to them to vote or not to vote. I totally agree. And the concept of the summit is in total agreement with that. May I just step aside for a minute and say this? Uh, when you mm -hmm. mentioned uh, we no longer can say to uh, the electorate, our electorate, hey, uh, you know, do you realize how much sacrifice mm -hmm. that our people did in order to get the vote? Mm -hmm. And I want to say, okay, let's stop right there. Do you realize <laughs> mm -hmm. how many people uh, in our community, uh, not being the seniors, but who don't even know what we're talking about that. So not only yeah. convincing, reminding them, they have no idea. Yeah. They have no history of it. And part of what we've got to do is educate them on the history. So that is it, the pie mm -hmm. chart, if you will. And part of it is uh, one of the mistakes uh, old people like you <laughs> <laughs> uh, and me, maybe. but we, the mistake we make is we make the assumption that people are versed in their history and versed in all of that. Right. I don't want to get off subject, but I have devoted a big part of my mm -hmm. uh, work in doing educating people on that for years. I, you know, I take uh, uh, well, this year will take seventy five people, forty of which are high school kids. Uh, right civil rights history tour and that's what it's directed towards is for mm -hmm. them to know somebody other than martin luther king <laughs> and those and so, know, some of them don't even know that well, don't they even know, know they know his yeah. name but they don't know what what did he why do. yeah you know yeah. it's just a yeah. day off yeah they, they don't know get the point. that they get a day off when they on president's day and they know they get a uh a day off on martin luther king day and they don't know who the presidents are they don't know but so we, that's part of, we can't just focus on, uh, and then I right. want to fill this in as part of the challenge and what we've been doing the year after year, and I've been guilty of it, is we get all huffed up about 90 days before the election and we try to educate the people, we try to register the people. Try to, you, it's a full-time job and it's a full-time focus. Again, that mm -hmm. is all a built into the thinking of the summit. We've got to uh, stop for a minute and I would just use the summit as a way to de describe it. And we had a book here. I don't know how well you see it, but it, it was the mm -hmm. uh, booklet handbook. But in it, uh, we described what we're really trying to, what we're trying to do and try mm -hmm. yeah. to and, which is a roadmap to success. Uh, that roadmap in includes all the things you say that we need to do. But the summit, which was February 4th, really only dealt with uh, two of the six major points of that roadmap. We, we, uh, we tried to get everybody to agree to the problem. I think they did. And then secondly, we sought input uh, you know, when you go in these meetings, Cheryl, and I've been in a many, and I'm sure you have too, and they have breakouts, and the breakout is, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to give you 10 minutes, or we're going to give you 12 minutes to do the breakout, and then we gave everybody an hour and a half, because we really no, it was good. yeah, to take the time and mm -hmm. hear from people uh, and get their input and document it, and so that was step one and two, uh, but the other things that we've got to do, I'll talk about later, but the whole idea is there are so many things we have to do, but let's document that what we have to do, remind people, and then start getting people to do them. That's that's what the summit really boils down to. I want to And I think that's one yeah. of the things that you're trying to do, um, because I do want to make sure people understand what's coming up is yeah not waiting till those 90 days is yeah. you know 
And I don't think people understand there's going to be another presidential election and there will be right after that will be our city local election is that, you know, you need to start now. Yeah. And what you're doing is you have three sessions coming up and I'm hoping that you will continue that every, because you got to reinforce this. Every cycle. And it's just, you can't just do it one, one month and then that's yeah. it. You have yeah. to keep doing this maybe every three months yeah. Um, yeah. until, you know, like next year, people are coming out now saying, so I do want to make sure be, before, cause we could talk forever, but you have something coming up Tuesday on May 9th, um, yeah. Tuesday, May 23rd, and, and Tuesday, set that June 6th. Up. Could you, let me set um, that up, if yeah. I may. Uh, uh, I want to set that up and try not to take too much time on I'm going to mention all of those dates that you're talking about. But very okay. quickly, uh, the summit happened, the first two steps, the summit, and then there are steps that we've been doing. We've taken all of that input. I'm going to be pretty quick with this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we've taken all that raw data that we got out of the summit and uh, from the input of the people. And the people were grassroots, Hispanics, South Sudanese, right. seniors, the churches. Uh, that was the exciting part that they were there. But we got input from that. We then, uh, so then we kind of closed the summit down and it could have looked like okay, what a great meeting, see you later. <laughs> but it wasn't, we established a task force and they've been meeting and they've taken and condensed, consolidated and clarified all of that data over the okay. since, since February for a lot of work, the, a kind of a task force headed up by uh, Barry Thomas. And mm -hmm. uh, then we have, de we developed a concise list of recommendations to be included in whatever plan we are going to have. May I say real quickly, Cheryl, something you probably picked up, but strategically, we decided to do it now because guess what? In, tw uh, in 2023, there are no elections. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could take the time to do this slowly and thoroughly as opposed mm -hmm. to the 90 day thing. We've got, you know, all 23 and most of 24 to get this starting to turn around. So I say that. Okay, so we do, we've do. we done that. Uh, we've done some other things. We've developed a kind of a logo and some of that I won't bore you with, but now we're at the point right now. In fact, tomorrow mm -hmm. we'll have a meeting. We're getting ready to start drafting the framework of the plan of action. That's mm -hmm. where we are. That plan of action. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and give you this date first. And then we'll back into the ones you mentioned. Uh, that plan of action will have all of those recommendations and more uh, structured in a way that we uh, can try to turn around. We did set some goals, uh, uh, 15,000 new registered voters to get our turn up by 10% during primary and 10% during uh, the general election. So we got, we do have a target and all of that. So then the plan of action is all the to-dos over the mm -hmm. next year, I'd say about 14 months, we try to do the thing. All right, with that said, then, but the plan of action is we're targeted to be able to come back, bring everybody back, Cheryl, mm -hmm. uh, what we're calling Summit 2, and roll that out. We're June 24th is when we're going, is our, plan time to do that so now okay. with all that said now are you saying that you're going to have an open uh, meeting tomorrow may 6th for yeah. individuals there, to uh, well there's been several uh, yes. of the task force of the people who okay. are working, doing all that stuff i said and they're meeting okay. again tomorrow yeah okay so that's it's not an uh, open meeting okay tent. yeah the big tent or I will be June 24th. Fourth, okay. And I, I, I'm still trying to secure a place. So, but that we, that's the target date to say, okay, we've we've done all the things. Now here it is. Who are you, Cheryl? We we got you down to to walk <laughs> around the block five times. <laughs> and so you say, okay, I'm willing to do that and uh, mm -hmm. all of that. So okay, with that said, 
there are some things that we can be doing now while we're still developing the plan. And part of that is making sure that we have people trained to do voter registration. Voter registration is only one little slice of the bigger pie, but it is something that we could start doing now. We don't have to wait for the strategic plan to be finished. And mm -hmm. so uh, it is our thought that let's get as many people trained to be a voter registrar. I know that's mm -hmm. going to require a minute to explain. Any of us can go register and we can register. Uh, we can go somewhere and somebody has uh, some voter registration forms over there. We can go over and fill it out. A voter registrar uh, is a is a formal, uh, uh, I don't want to call it a job, but it's a, it is something that you uh, are trained by the, uh, the election commission. Mm -hmm. And a voter registrar is able to go to any event and lay out uh, and help people, that's the key, register to vote, not mm -hmm. just lay the forms out. You can't, you're not really supposed to be able to help people if you haven't been trained to help them. Mm -hmm. and so we want, as we have set a goal of having a hundred voter registrar in our community. You got to train them. It's about forty-five minute training, uh, and so we're starting that. And uh, we have the three dates. You want me to? Yeah, uh, we're going to. Uh, let me confirm that this is correct. Is May ninth? You're going to have a Zoom meeting yes. for sign up. Then you're going to have May twenty third at five thirty p.m. Yeah. And um, June 6th at 5.30 p.m. And actually, and I'm going to, um, when we're done, I, I'm going to insert a slide, which okay. will have those okay. dates for you okay. Very and good. the link and where um, they're going to be held at. But that, I just want to make sure that information is correct, correct. is that yeah. this that is, is where we correct. need to have um, training so that you can go around and get people, um, you know, and I, Correct me if I'm wrong. Once you're trained, um, can is there a requirement in to, to register someone? Do you have to have one of each party or yeah, you do. be able to do that? Uh, uh, in order to form do a formal voter registration, you need to have uh, there. Think of it as three parties: Democrat, mm -hmm. uh, Republican, and Independent. Actually, it mm -hmm. could be a fourth party, but uh, and so you have to have one of each. Uh, at, at, a, at an event. And what we do is when people take the training, uh, we find out what they are. And we, if we have an event, we mix them. So you can mm -hmm. have that. We also, quite frankly, sometimes have, let's just say a Democrat for mm -hmm. a temporary period of time, uh, re-register as an independent. So we can do that. But the, the, the intent of the law is that you mm -hmm. have, people from both parties. It's really not practical when the Republicans have a big event way out west somewhere, uh, mm -hmm. have Republicans. And so when we have it way down north, we have Democrats, uh, but then, but independents are the key to that uh, mm -hmm. because we don't want to go out and help re uh, register out west and they don't want to come down here and, and help us register, but independents are mm -hmm. independent and they're willing to help. So yes, that. And we take care of that. Uh, when an event comes up, we say we, we need to, we help facilitate that requirement. Mm -hmm. sure. Good point. Okay. So the whole point is that let's get our people trained during this dead time. And mm -hmm. we've got uh, Juneteenth coming up. we got Native right. Omaha. We, well, Native Omaha might not be the best place to register, but well, you can't. You you know what? You use it all. Yeah. If yeah. you only get five people registered, that's five more than you didn't have. Yeah, yeah, I and always it, think of, and it adds up. I, I'm a believer in using um, uh, as much as any means necessary. So yeah. even if that's an intent, hey, let's let's take what we can get because right. the time will fly by. And That's it will right. soon if be, you, start now, you know, we don't have to right. register 10,000 by next week. We can yep. just register 23 mm -hmm. uh, at a big event and then 23 here. And so 
Oh, and over the course of a year, you you can get there. And so yeah. we're going to go full board. So so that's why we're doing that. Thank you for for sharing that with you. We are we're asking the churches and mm-hmm. organizations to get people to this training. It doesn't cost anything. It's about forty five minutes. Uh, the mm-hmm. first one is a Zoom, which is the one coming up on the ninth. Yes. And let me five thirty. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, you mentioned, uh, and, and they all might mention that we did this just kind of make it simple. They're all on Tuesdays at five thirty. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you, you you're going to put the link up. But if they go yes. to the election commission site. Uh, okay, we can add that. Uh, this link is there. Okay. So they can just go there and just kind of follow their nose for voter registration training, and all of that information is there also. Okay, great. Well, we're kind of winding down, and I want to give you the last few minutes here of anything that you would like to get out to folks um, regarding this or, uh, you know, the importance, again, I think, of voting. Um and whatever we can do is to get people to be inspired. Um, a young lady, I was watching um, one of them, they were on a program the other day, uh, the ones who won the uh, college women's basketball yeah. uh, ter- you know, tournament there. And uh, she said, um, Hudson asked her, or, you know, each one of them, there was the three, the top three, asked each one, what did they think? Uh, their purpose was and the young lady and I said you know what that comes out about the mouth of babes when she said I hope and she says my mother has given this and inspired me and I hope that what I did playing basketball and what I do with my life is to inspire before I expire Oh, and I thought, whoa, you know, whoa. people didn't, they probably didn't really get that. But if you stop and think, and that's what, you know, we're trying to do here yeah. is to inspire people yeah. is yeah. do this because tomorrow may be too late. So we yeah. need to do this now and, and hopefully. That up here. I'm sorry. It's a really good story, but I'm sorry you brought that up. Because I'm getting to expire soon. <laughs> oh no, you ain't one to expire. <laughs> if I say that, they're gonna really understand. No, you but you have I that. Say you know, this, uh, in in the little time you've given me, uh, my way of summarizing all this is mm-hmm. you and I are working on a couple of things on them. But let me just see if I can put this in another perspective. We are working. Uh, Cheryl and I and a number of other people, we're working on trying to hold uh, the Omaha Public Power District feet to the fire as it relates to toxics in the air, (laughs) coal burning plants that are are close to our communities. All right. We're uh, working uh, to uh, stop the legislature from doing nonsensical things to suppress the vote. We're Mm -hmm. working to try to get uh, political prisoners like Ed Poindexter released from prison after 50 mm-hmm. years. And I could go down the list, but you're getting the point. But most of the time, we're, what we're up against is elected officials. And exactly. so, and, and things that, that uh, if we had more people who uh, believed in what we believed in, then we would get a lot of these things done a lot easier or, mm-hmm. or that's where all of this comes. We, we've we got people who are working and we want to keep uh, up in the minimum wage. All of these things are not just politics in the abstract. They're real things and people need to understand that. I do want to say also that to your audiences, we, we urge you to take advantage. There's, Cheryl mentioned the fact we need to educate to, uh, our community on so many things at that converges and then some of it is strictly le- election but it's all this stuff but we ask you to come to town halls and informational <laughs> sessions and many of you stay home uh, some of you stay home for the right reason you'd rather do it by zoom we try to make more of these available by zoom mm-hmm. 
this program. But the point is that either by Zoom or in person, don't miss the opportunity to be educated. You know, help us out. We're trying to and be involved. And be involved. And then the next step, mm-hmm. you won't even have to urge you to be involved. Uh, you want to. You start getting educated, you're going to want to be involved. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so uh, that's what I'd like to leave with people. Don't sit on the sidelines and talk about uh, the game that you're watching on TV, meaning the game that we're, mm-hmm. the work that we're doing. Get educated and then get involved. And you don't have to change the world yourself. Maybe that's what turns people back. Or people just don't believe that change can be made anymore. That's not true. Uh, we're making no. change all the time. All the every time. day. Every, every day, day you have a chance to breathe. Yeah, every day. And it's, uh, the victories are not on TV. And the victories, <laughs> uh, so no, nope. we'll know that we're fighting. During battles. our everyday yeah. lives. Yeah, yeah. And uh-huh. so, uh, uh, you know, come back, get, have your hope that things yes. are. There is good. hope. Right. Yeah. And together we can make that change. Um, I, you know, uh, Preston, I, I really have enjoyed talking to you with all jokes aside. Um, and I do want, you know, to say that um, I do respect and admire that, you know, you're working on this and you're doing it now. And um, this is not going to be, hopefully it won't be our last time talking because I'd like for you to come back after um, the summit and as particular before yeah. June 24th, um, if you would come back and um, talk about, you know, the what you're doing for that June 24th and why it's so important to be out. Uh, maybe we'll get it scheduled so we can get it out. You know, I, I always hate, I hate last minute things. So um, if you'll keep in touch with me, which we see each other all the time at different things, but um, I just really thank you for coming on today and giving some of this information. And also, um, whether you realize it or not, I think you have inspired several people who will be watching is to say, you know what, maybe I can do something I might not be able to do. And the other point I like to make is that it was brought out today that, folks, this is a community effort. It is not a black or brown or white or gray or purple, whatever you are is irrelevant. It is if you are part of this community, you are important. You have relevancy and we need to come together uh, and work together and we can get many things changed and accomplished. So again, we wanna point out and we will have at the end of uh, this, we'll have Preston's contact information as well as um information regarding the sessions that are coming up and um also we will end with his new logo of uh vote yeah. our way up very yeah. good yeah. Yeah. i'm not going to give you credit for designing that because i don't believe it but um it was a good it's a good logo so with that i hope you have a, the rest of your week will be uh successful productive and blessed and uh we'll see you on the next time around with cheryl weston conversation so thank you again let's get this done before i expire <laughs> <laughs> you know share one more thing on the way out is that yeah you know, this community is turning itself around we got new things happening everywhere we got new theater we got uh new developments a lot of stuff now is really the time we need to flex our muscles in every way in demand all right <laughs>